Hello, everybody. Hi, I am Mandy Frangiliati, and this is... Hi, Abby Friend. And we are here with... Friday bum, bum, with bum. Friends. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, Friday with Friends is our opportunity to chat um, with our past clients, with our future clients, about what's happening in this market, to answer questions, um, and to really make sure that we are um, providing all the information. So if you do have any real estate needs, you know us, you can think of yeah. us, and we're here to help you. Perfect. So, um, what are we chatting about oh my today? Goodness, we already have some people watching. Hi, Deb. Hi, Meg. <laughs> what are we chatting about today? So, we are chatting about staging. Yes. Yep. So, what we're talking about is staging. The whole piece is how you're presenting your home to the general public. And mm -hmm. the reason this has been such a, an important topic is because staging used to be sort of like an after all the work is done. Right now in this market, we're finding that you don't have to be doing as much work as you used mm -hmm. to maybe two or three springs ago. You don't have to be, you know, tearing out the kitchen and totally opening up walls to prepare your house for sale to make sure you're maximizing it. There is such a low inventory out there right now yeah. that buyers are really lowering their standards for what they had previously expected um, because they just, they need a house. So what right. we're finding is we're leaning more toward just staging tips to say, listen, I know you want to redo your kitchen, um, but this is not even just like, not even painting the cabinets. We're talking basic, efficient, not expensive, best ways mm -hmm. to make an impact when you're putting your house for sale. That's what we like. That's what we like, getting that return on investment. Do you want to talk like what Friday with Friends is? Oops, I forgot that part. She gets really excited No, sometimes. I did. I did. You did? Yeah. Okay, but what about like the hashtag live, all oh, that stuff? Oh, I didn't stuff, say those things. Stuff. So if you're watching with us, I know you're better you at this thing. No, okay. Hashtag live, if you're watching um, with us right now. Hi, hashtag, Katie. Hi, Ash. Sorry. Hi, guys. Hashtag replay if you're watching it later. And if there's any extra tips, anything like that that you experienced or that we're not mentioning, definitely comment below. We're a big family here, so we'll we'll work together to get everybody as many tips and awesome you know ways to save your house as possible. Fabulous. Okay. Thanks, so, for, thanks for keeping me on track. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, good. You're welcome. That's why we... Go That's well why together. We need two of us. Yeah, good point. Okay, so should we start with kind of what the goal is for staging? Yeah, that'll help. Because really, so staging, as Mandy said, is presenting it in the best light possible, presenting yes. your house in the best light possible. So really, the goal is to make it as depersonalized and as desirable and um, what's a better word that I'm trying to say? Um, to as many buyers as possible. Yes, you you want it to you want it to be appealing, appealing. to the most amount of buyers. That's what I was looking for. Appealing, see? Oh, coming through. <laughs> you want to be as appealing to as many buyers as possible. So we're going to talk today about different ways to, you know, really declutter, depersonalize, and allow, you know, buyer A, B, C, everybody to walk in and just fall in love with the house. Yes, and the key with staging is what you're, if you watched our previous Friday with Friends, we talk a lot about how a lot of times your perception of your home is a lot different than the public's perception. So you think you're neutral. You think that you, you're prepared, um, but really it's important and to get a professional or a really good friend that you trust um, to be able to come through and be honest with you. So these are some questions that you should consider, but also have conversation with a professional in some way um, to be able to make sure that you're yep. um, really you're really hitting the nail on the head with it. And it's um, you know it's just a third party. Exactly. Good point. Okay, so should we start with number one? Yeah. How many do we have? We we like to mentally um, prepare six. Six. So our oh six favorite. Proven, inexpensive um, tips for you um, to really make sure that you're letting your house shine without having to do a lot of work. Love it. Um, hi, Kevin. Hi, Elizabeth. I think hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Kevin. I think I saw Niner pop on there oh, too. Oh, hi, Niner. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> awesome. All right. So number one is very simple, very general, but it goes a long way, and that is declutter. Yes. So there's, sounds simple, but yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. There's a ton that goes into it. You know, everything from clearing off the entire fridge, you know, taking down the wedding invitations, the RSVPs, the baby pictures, really making so that. Hard, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, really decluttering that, decluttering the countertops completely, um, the, all the main spaces, really making them as empty as possible. Mm -hmm. I always say a good rule of thumb is when you're looking at maybe your kitchen and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks so weird. It's so bare. It's so empty. That's when it's right. We didn't even plan that. That's when it's right. That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> and the other, and we, we, so we always have like our favorite sayings and err on the side of bear is the other one where if you're saying, should I leave this out? Err on the side of bear. You are not, this is not how you live. You're like, of course, I, how can I not have my yeah. Vitamix? Like, <laughs> this isn't how you live day in and day out. This is how we're going to highlight your, highlight your countertops. This is where it's going to make everything look really, really spacious. Perfect. And the other comment that I wanted to add to on decluttering is how important it is to declutter um, around the fridge. So a lot of times people will keep their side magnet or they're storing up top. You have to think if I'm a buyer walking through and I see that you have your cereal stored above your fridge, the first thing I'm thinking is, there's nowhere else for that cereal. Where's my cereal gonna go? <laughs> Panicking, being like there's not enough storage in the house, so you really need to be thinking when you have places out of sorts, what is that? what impression might that mm -hmm. give in the buyer that's maybe even a subconscious impression. So you really wanna make sure you're clearing out on, you know, everywhere. Yep, yep, definitely. And then when it comes to your basement, your garage, your yes. closets, those aren't going to be as critical as the main living spaces, like your kitchen, maybe your master bedroom, your living room. We really want the main spaces to be completely empty, but with those other spaces, those that's what they're for. They're for storage. But closets, I know you have a thought on closets yeah. and how decluttered, how... I, I like closets to be 80%. And what I mean by that is I need to be able to easily pull something out. I need to be able to make it so I'm not like shoving in a blazer. We want it to be 80%. I'm blazer. laughing because that's your closet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not for sale. But not for sale. When it is... Be decluttered. Yes. So making sure that you're that it's not where it's overwhelming. And with these basements, like there's a reason you're moving, and it's probably be, maybe because you need more storage space. Yeah. So the basement's going to be filled, and that's okay. And the garage might be filled too. But the key is to make it appear organized. Yeah. Because when it does, I mean, just Pinterest and you know, if you need someone to have, find help, it is, there's so much value that goes into it. Cause then when a buyer walks in, what's going through their mind is oh, they are so organized. Mm -hmm. If I lived here, I could be organized too. <laughs> and those are all really, really positive feelings that you're getting when you're doing that. Yeah. You want to show, wow, they have so much storage and things aren't falling on top of me. Um, so it's really a, you know, kind of give and take a little bit when it comes to those extra storage spots. Yes. All right, hit me with number two. Number two is create open walking space. So really putting yourself in a buyer's shoes. So yeah. when you first walk into a house, where do you think they're gonna go? Are they gonna gravitate towards the kitchen? Are they gonna take a right and walk through the living room or the dining room? So really put yourself there. Put yourself on, you know, at the front door and then figure out what, what that ideal walking space is going to be and make sure that you have about three feet a three foot walkway the entire way through. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people will have, and I'm not, I'm not like a feng shui expert. I don't know, but all I know is sometimes if there's like a couch and a chair, you're walking in and it's like, but it's great for everyone to sit. Well, it's not great when someone who's not going to be sitting mm -hmm. is going to be walking. So removing the, that big furniture, yeah. um, moving it. Um, and sometimes you don't want to move it up against a window and furniture placement is so, so specific. So we can't really, you know, tackle that, that be, base right that now. That could be a whole nother video. Yeah. So so when you're walking through, really making sure you have that three feet. Um, tables, a lot of times, you know, there's a bunch of lease that you can have, making it big or small, highlighting, yes, that you can have all of this space, but that you really want to have those walkways available. I see it often where we have to remove those big pieces of furniture in, in bedrooms, especially, you know, maybe a master bedroom yes. where we don't have as much closet space as maybe we would like, and it's, you know, two or three different, um, you know, drawers. Yeah. For husband, wife drawers, I often recommend taking a few of those out again to have that open walks, uh, open walkway. You know, they should be able to walk around the bed, get to the closet, maybe get to the master bathroom, whatever that might be. So that's yeah. another space where I see a lot of times it's just better to take out those extra pieces. Yeah. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Amy. Hi, Megan. Hey, Mike. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Nate. Hi, Pete. Hi, Kevin. Goodness. Thanks so everyone for tuning friends. in. So what we're talking about today <laughs> is the best, most affordable ways to really make an impact, and that is staging. So first we talked about decluttering. The second piece was making sure you have that open walkway and really making it a lot more spacious and taking out mm -hmm. these important, these pieces of furniture that you think are so, so important, but looking at them through a the lens of a buyer, you might say, listen, getting rid of that dresser, getting rid of this chair is really, really important. And this is where we have people that lean on their friends and they're like, listen, I got this chair that needs yeah. to go somewhere. Can it go in your garage? Can it go in your garage? <laughs> or some people rent storage units. We've got mm -hmm. connections with storage units where we'll say, hey, listen, if you guys just want us to, we can take out a couple things and, you know, your house is going to be sold in three seconds, you know, to be able to help you guys that way too. So yeah, we, we do point. a lot of those things. 
Good point. Number three. All right, number three is removing any personal items. Mm -hmm. And this includes, you know, photos on the walls, um, you know, different knickknacks that maybe you love, but they really clutter up a space, things like that. So really yes. removing those. And then we often say, just head to TJ Maxx, head to Home Goods. I mean, because who needs an excuse yeah. to go to TJ's? We'll meet you guys there later. <laughs> Um, you know, heading to some of those stores and just grabbing really simple pieces of art. You know, some of the ones that have like the three that you can kind of line up together, mm -hmm. really swapping some of those personal items out with something a little bit more mm -hmm. generic is, is good. What other personal items do you see? Well, well, what I also see is sometimes people say, well, I have my pictures of my babies. Like, is that okay? And there's a difference between like... Unless they're really cute. Unless they're really cute. <laughs> you need to leave them. Um, but if there is, you know, do you, you remember how like there's some families who it's like kindergarten photo, first grade, second grade grade third grade and it's like this wall of <laughs> children's photos that's different compared to like you know a professional like really big oversized canvas that fits really perfectly in the room so right. we don't mean like depersonalized like you can't even like you have to take every single picture out but it just needs to be not really intense and you know kind of in your face yeah some of the other things that I always talk about too is um, Abby how would you feel if you walked into a house and you saw a huge Duke sign well, as many of you know, I'm a Tar Heel, and that would not make me very happy. So <laughs> what, what the whole point of staging, too, is you want to evoke really positive emotions. So if you have, like, a political sign, if you have just a lot of those things that maybe could evoke a negative emotion, those are things to try to hide. Um, you know, I did, if you're from, if you were a realtor and you maybe went through a property in Canandaigua, you'll know what I'm talking about, but there was this property that literally it was, like, Fox wolf four deer heads like in the living room and like our clients like their kids were like panicked and right. like we love you just have to be aware of what everyone's going to be thinking of. exactly and that brings us back to the first topic of making the home as desirable as possible for the largest amount of buyers yes. and the largest buyer pool mm -hmm. so sometimes even if you know some people might um might be okay with that. Others might not. And we just want to make it as broad as possible. Like Megan, you would love your deer heads. Yes. <laughs> Megan is like, I want deer heads all the time. Yeah. I would be like, oh, little baby deer. <laughs> I know. But that's, yes, that's a really good point. So making it, you know, removing any personal items, making it as, um, desirable to as many people as possible. Yeah. And invoking all positive emotions, no negative. Right. Um, good point. Okay. So four, Fresh and neutral as possible. So what this just means is a lot of times you have lamps that are older. You have window treatments that just haven't been updated. You have rugs that have been walked on a lot. These are things that the goal is you can take with them to your next house. So you're going to buy a rug and you can use that rug again. Mm -hmm. So finding something that just is freshening it up. And a lot of times you don't even realize it, but a new carpet that matches new throw pillows, that matches new window treatments, that can make such a dramatic difference. So making sure you're keeping the idea of like fresh and updated yeah. from, and this is something too exterior. A lot of times, I guess now it's finally starting to get warm, but for so long we'd be, we'd be showing these decks and they're like, we've tried to paint this deck about for like three months now, but it's been snowing every day. But it's snowing all the time. So sometimes if you have a deck that you want to spruce up a little bit, you can get a, you know, an indoor outdoor carpet that you can mm -hmm. lay down with new patio furniture. All of that um, can make a really, really dramatic difference. Yep. Fresh, definitely. neutral updates. Ooh. Oh, dance move. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. It just it felt right. I like it. I like it. And another thing that I don't think you mentioned is in some of the houses where um, you got a lot of likes on your dance move, <laughs> um, I know it. I a lot of the it. things, you know, and maybe if your house was built in the 70s, the 80s, and you might have one of, you know, a pink bathtub or mm -hmm. a pink, you know, tile bath or green or whatever it might the be, is filling the rest of the bath instead of redoing the entire bath like we spoke about earlier get some neutral accents like a neutral shower curtain a neutral rug you know really making everything else really simple so the pink tile or the pink bathtub doesn't make such a difference yes yes hi honey my husband <laughs> hi <here>. eddie <laughs> well and it's so funny because have you guys ever really looked at your shower curtain like i don't know about you but i don't really recognize how like old and gross it gets till it's like Really bad. So all oh, you yeah. do, mm -hmm. freshen up that shower curtain. It can make a dramatic difference. Right. They're like eight bucks. I know. Well, I got some on Amp. Like even like the white, the, oh, the, the clear, inside the interior liner. liner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Makes a difference. Do, yep. Those do make a big difference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Inappropriate. <honey. laughs> 
<laughs> All right, number five. five, smells. Ooh, so this is, <laughs> this is a little different than staging for the eyes. This is all senses. all senses we're working on. So a lot of times this is again where you get a friend, you have your realtor, something along those lines. Mandy has talked about her free smell test that we offer if you want us to come over and sniff your house. It was really that. good when I had pregnancy nose because mm -hmm. I could smell anything. There you go. Bring her over. <laughs> yeah, not yet, not right now. <laughs> but you know, that's definitely something that a lot of people don't think about. Um, and it's not just you know, bad smells like pets or anything yes. like that, but it could also be the other side where it's too many air fresheners or something like that too. Mm -hmm. um, what are some instances you've had with smells? Well, for us, I mean, it's it's pet odors too, where a lot of times it's caught up in your furniture, but a buyer's mm -hmm. gonna walk in and think that it's the house and think that it smells. Um, we've had instances where people have walked in and it just smells like third, like it smells like, mm -hmm. you know a teenage boy lives there. Right, maybe it's sports equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We even had someone who had um, interest in a property, looked like in a house that's, yeah, so Elizabeth's talking about how she had looked at a house and it smelled like four wet dogs, and when you're in that, pro when you live in it every single day, it's not dramatic, right. and so you don't notice it, and that's why you really need to have that outside perspective. Um, the other thing is we had someone who walked into a house and the, the um, smell of a air freshener was so overwhelming, it's, what are they hiding? Mm -hmm. Is there something that acts like, is there mold that they're hiding? You know, how are we uncovering that? Megan just talked about the bleach smell. Some people, we have clients that's that scary. Leave, they love it. They're like, does, is anyone like that? They love the Clorox smell and they're like, yes, the smell of bleach, <laughs> it means clean. And then other people walk in and they're like, oh, it smells like bleach. So the, anything that's yeah. strong there. Yeah. And I've even had it before where we have, um, you know, a seller who made dinner and then had a showing and they made cauliflower yes. rice. And she didn't even think about it, you know, make cauliflower rice and then left and they were like, it smelled really weird. They should probably take care of that. And we were like, what is it? Oh my She's God. She's just trying, girls are trying to eat She's healthy. She's like, I'm trying to eat healthy. <laughs> so you, you learn from all of those things, but it's definitely something to keep it as neutral as possible. You know, we find that some of the best ones are really basic, you know, vanilla, cinnamon, green tea, things like that. Just really basic smells, mm -hmm. but not too strong either. So it's a... Find balance. Yeah, and again, get that third party perspective to give you a free sniff test. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, Megan, yes. All right, you wanna do our last okay, one? Okay, so our last one is, so we're going through all the senses, right? And the last one is feeling, and it's the temperature of the house. Mm. So, I mean, in the winter, everything, you know, there's heat in a home, hopefully. We've been through some that don't have heat, I guess. Yeah. But majority of the time, temperature's fine. As we get into the spring and summer, it's so important that if you don't have central air, that you do have some sort of an AC yeah. unit. Because if, if we have clients that are walking into a house and like, eh, it doesn't have central air, in the winter, they're like, eh, it doesn't have central air. In the summer, they walk in and it's, you just feel icky and you're like, it is hot, I am sweaty, I'm yeah. not comfortable as I'm going through this showing. I'm actually excited for that feeling. I'm like, bring me summer. I want to be sticky. Yeah, I want to be sticky. <laughs> um, and that's, that's really good too, especially in some older houses where they have AC, but maybe it doesn't get to the second floor bedrooms. Yes. Or it doesn't get up there. And, you know, we might not want to put an AC unit in it for that instance because you don't want someone to say, oh, the AC doesn't work upstairs, but maybe an extra fan. Or just to get the air moving a little bit, making sure that it's that mm -hmm. it's not sticky. Temperature is definitely important. Yes, yes. So that kind of completes our all around. Go through um, them all? Yes, yes. All right. Okay, so our five staging tips. Was it six? So our six staging tips. Six. <laughs> Six staging tips that are uh, that are very, very affordable. It's nothing that you have to go crazy about, but that are really important in the cheapest way to make a huge impact when you're selling your house. Perfect. First, number one, declutter everything. Number two, <laughs> create open walking spaces. So three feet on either side, wherever you go, and really open up any place that, you know, any, any important room in the home. Number three, remove any personal items, especially ones that bring a negative yeah. impact yes. to potential buyers. Hi, Kara. Hi, Maggie. <laughs> Number four, fresh and as neutral as possible. And this sometimes does require you to be purchasing some new stuff, but the goal is you can use it wherever else you're going because you can take it with you. Yep, of course. And then number five is make sure that the house smells good, not too overpowering, um, but really just neutral, comforting smells. Oh, cozy, 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 cozy smells. <laughs> and the last one, number six, is make sure it feels good. Make sure the temperature is good, whether it be hot, whether it be cold. Really make sure it's that comfortable temp temperature so that when clients walk in, that's nothing that's on their mind because it's in a comfortable, comfortable temperature. 
I love it. All right. That's well, everything. Thank you so much for tuning off with Friday with Friends. Thanks, guys. Friday with Friends is our opportunity to talk about some of the best tips and questions and comments and what's happening in the market so that if you do have any real estate needs, you know of us and you can call on us and we can be your realtor of choice. So our, our website is www.friendonyourside.com. Tune in here for all of our Friday with Friends for more updates. If you have anything you'd like for us to chat about, next time I think we're going to talk about is photos um, mm -hmm. and how we use these, stag these staging to really be able to um, capture the, the home in the best way for the buyers to really maximize your exposure. Perfect. That sounds great. See you next time. Bye, bye guys. Have a good weekend.